Begin. Okay. All right, Herbie, where are you holding? Yeah, what page are we on? Took a picture. No, that was Tuesday night class. Oh, this week oh. starts with this one. My, my book opened at 41. Yeah, I think that's where we were. 40, 41. All right, you're going to have to show me that in your somebody. Oh, uh, that's 41. Dalit? Okay, that makes sense. We're up to Dalit. Okay. Dalit? Absolutely. Dalit. I have a strong memory. Dalit. 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 That's the one that comes after giving. I remember you saying that at the end of the day. Mm. End of the session. Yes, okay. it was Dalit. All right, Dalit it is. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. All right, so what we talked about last time, and again, if you can't hear me, feel free to move closer. Um, I've just been yelling for the last two days, that's all. Um, so what we talked about last time was the, how the concept of connecting to Hashem and perfecting oneself really become one and the same at a certain point. Once a person reaches a point of perfection, they become elevated to the extent that they are connecting to Hashem in a close way. And that itself is also the reward for what we're doing. So those three things really all come together. But it's not an immediate result, but it's the product of a lot of work. Through that work of perfecting oneself, and connecting to Hashem, they attain that reward because that really all is the same. So that's, uh, it's a deep concept and there's a lot involved and it has tremendous ramifications um, in everything that we do, the way it affects us, the way it affects us spiritually. There's, there's a lot involved, um, but that was last week's discussion. <clears throat> so let's move on. So we are now up to um, part one, chapter two, Letter Dalit, okay, which is on page 40 and 41 in your uh, standard issue. <clears throat> okay, so the Ramchal explains. Hine, l'shayiyu v'metzias ha'anyanim ha'shenim ha'ela shel shemes v'chesaron shuzacharno. There's got to be these two elements that we talked about. We talked about perfection, and we talked about deficiency. And we talked about how in order for a person to grow, they need to choose perfection over deficiency. And those things have to both be available, though. Because as we learned, in order for a person to attain this closeness to Hashem, they have to earn their keep. They have to earn this growth. If this growth is something that simply happens, it's given to them, that's not earning it, and by not earning it, it doesn't really become a part of who they are. And if it doesn't really become a part of who they are, then they're not really connecting with Hashem. Because Hashem obviously is, in essence, perfection. So in order to be able to connect to that in the best possible way, we have to also become internally growth-oriented. Okay. So in order for this to happen, we learned... We have to have both options available to us. We have to have the option of growing, and we have to have the option of not growing or becoming deficient. So, the Ramchal says that since we need to have both of these things, and in order for the, the, all of uh, creation to be in the, that way that it needs to be, which is the way that we've described, which is having both of these available options. Pirish, meaning, <clears throat> to have the ability to have both of these things, will be and being able to actually accomplish either of these things. Through this, we will be able to acquire perfection, not simply be given, but to acquire perfection. And not only that, but we will be able to shed and rid ourselves of any deficiencies. And there also has to be, in this creation, lots of things, lots of circumstances, lots of objects, lots of creations that are all going to be a part of this process. Pirish meaning, in order to accomplish this, in order to acquire this perfection, 
there have to be a lot of parts and pieces that are going to play their roles in giving us the opportunity to make that process a reality. It's clear that there have to be lots and lots of different details and different things and different concepts that are all going to exist in reality. And there has to be tremendously profound connection between all of those different things until they will succeed in accomplishing the intention of creation. So let's just talk about this for a second. This is something that has inspired many people over the, uh, the millennia, that the world seems to be made by design. The r- number of different pieces that work together to allow for our world to exist as it does is, is infinite. You know, the, the, if the sun was, was inches closer, the world wouldn't function. If it was inches further away, it wouldn't function. Right? There are so many minute details in the cosmos that make tremendous differences. And then just looking at the human body, the amount of harmony that has to work between all the different parts, and just think of what it takes to make up a cell. You know, when I was in, when I was in school, a cell was like two or three parts. Now a cell is like 400 parts. Right? And then there's all the parts in between those parts that we don't really know what that is. Right? There's just so much that all has to work together just to make a single cell. You know, if the electron wasn't spinning around, then the cell would die. Right? It's like these are things that we can't even see. And yet every single thing around us, in order for it to exist, has to have every piece of that functioning perfectly. The heart. The heart has to beat the entire lifetime of a human being. One beat is skipped. It's not going to be a good thing. <laughs> right? The, an entire lifetime can end or at least be changed drastically because a single beat of millions of beats is missed. We don't understand the, the harmony of how everything works together. And then all of this is for one purpose. It's all in order for us to be able to live and to be able to make these choices. Now, in addition to all of that, you also have to have all the circumstances. So let's say, for example, I have been tasked with um, trying to grow my neshama in the area of uh, chesed. Okay? So I need to do kindness for others. That's one thing that I need to improve my neshama with. In order for me to do that, I, there have to be people in need that I can do it for. Okay? So let's say, I'm, today I'm given an opportunity that there's uh, somebody, uh, an old lady who needs to cross the street, and I'm given the opportunity to help her cross that street. Do you know how much went into that meeting of getting me and her at that intersection at the same time? She had an entire lifetime that led up to this moment. And that entire lifetime may have been in order to give me that opportunity to cross her that street. A lifetime with all the people that she was involved with, all the people that she touched, all the people that touched her, all of her entire life and experience may have all been for this one moment. But not only that, she wasn't just created when she was born. She had parents. So their whole lifetimes were also connected and everyone that they were involved with and all of their experiences that led them to be married and to have this child, all of that may have all led just to this moment. And then you got to take that back. Generations. We don't grasp the, the grand picture. It's like, it's impossible. There's so much involved, and Hashem has to put all of that together to give us these choices, to give us these opportunities for growth. So... He's, and he says over here that there have to be so many things and so much harmony and connection between them. If you think about that, it'll, it'll really be inspiring because there, there's no end to the greatness of this grand plan and how everything works together. It's fascinating. So would that be the only reason that, that the old lady would be... Not necessarily. Here? She might, There may have been multiple things. Likely there were many yeah. things throughout her lifetime that she needed to do and things that she, people and things she needed to interact with, and each one of them 
works for a certain yeah. I just think segment I remember, of this yeah. big picture. And all of that also has to be interconnected. Yeah. Right? Okay. So there's so many things. There's no way that this, this is, nothing about this can be random. Can't work. Nothing can be random. Is it like a very, uh, did you ever see Truman Show? No. Okay, so yeah. like, this movie, it, it, basically this entire world exists, like it's a TV show, but the guy, the main character has no idea. So I think, I would have a hard time grasping the fact that like, my, my life is only so that like, this one moment can happen for somebody else. No. Yeah. So, okay. so no, so like, it's not. It's, it's you have like to understand. that, but it's like you that have to, So we're going to talk about this shortly, but you have to understand <laughs> that you are the center of the universe. <laughs> Everything that happens around you is because how it's going to affect you. Mm-hmm. You have to look at it that way. From your perspective, okay. Hashem has created the entire world for you. It's very selfish, but it's also a tremendous amount of responsibility. Mm-hmm. And it's actually really not selfish, because if you realize the whole world's for you and you really understand that, you won't be selfish at all. Because you'll realize this entire world is here because of me. i got to make sure that I'm not into me. i got to be into everyone around me because that's what I'm here for. So, anyway. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> are, we, uh, are we a little bit comfortable with this? Sure. All right. It takes a lot to digest, but it's, uh, it's an important element. Okay. V'ulam. <clears throat> However, Habriya Asher his Atadal Inyan Hagadalaza. So the, the creature that's going to be destined to fill this this mission, the Hainu, Ladvek is by Isbarak Mash Zakarnu, meaning to connect to Hashem, as we've explained. He tikare ha ikris shabuchalabriya. This one creature is going to be the main focus, the primary creature of all creation. And everything else that exists in reality, is nothing but a helper in some way or some form to contribute to some element of the life and the growth of this main creature, the primary creature. Say that it should be able to be successful and to happen that they should reach their perfection somehow through this other creature playing its role and therefore everything else will be called secondary to the main element of creation so whatever this main creation is that's the creation that's able to connect to Hashem and everything else in the world Everything else that exists, every gust of wind, every blade of grass, every fly, every star, (laughs) and that fly, right? Every single person, whatever it is, is all there in order to set the stage for the main actor to do their part. Okay, so we have to think about that. Now, I'm, I'm hoping everyone here can guess... Who, or what that main creature is, I can, I'm not going to give it away just yet. Um, <laughs> but but assuming we can guess, then we can understand that there's there's an entire world around us. And you know, like this this friend of mine that I've mentioned in the past explained, he's like, they're not just goldfish. Hmm? The lollipop friend, yes, same guy. So he said, you know, the rest of the world isn't just goldfish, meaning they're not just there to look at and. You know, see, and they do their own thing, and we're in different worlds. We're not related. They're in their aquarium, and, you know, we just walk by and say hi, right? That's not what the rest of creation is. The rest of creation has purpose that's connected. All right, I'll give it away to mankind, all right? So, <laughs> um, but every single other thing that exists is not just there to fill up the world so that it should be, you know, there should be things in places, and it shouldn't just be barren. No, every single thing has a purpose, has a part to play in this big picture and is somehow going to affect mankind. So yes, that mosquito over there has a purpose that's somehow going to relate to a human being. And it might not be realized in the lifetime of this mosquito, but this mosquito might need to be there because ten generations later that mosquito is going to bite somebody and it's going to have some part of their lives. 
might not be a significant part, but it's going to be something. So every single he was thing. Here last night, I got him. You got him. Uh, all right. Well, you know how many generations <laughs> of mosquitoes went into that. Still <laughs> Can we discuss roaches then? Roaches. I'm kidding. Yeah, absolutely. Every every roach has its reason, right? That's how it goes. That's it. So sometimes it's for us to let out our frustration. Uh, who knows? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not. But it's not going record. It's being recorded. It is being recorded, yes. Uh, and and uh, this was for a parable's sake only. Um, so, the, the, but the idea here is, is very profound. And it's very powerful. We have to realize that when you have the central theme, everything else that revolves around it is support. Right? If, you, if, if anyone's ever been involved, and I haven't, but if anyone's ever been involved in, in producing a movie, I mean, I have, but not like a real one. But, so you've got a set, right? So you're on, you're on the set, and you have people who build the set. And the set is where the acting takes place. There's nothing on that set that's not there by design. Everything is made because we were trying to paint a picture here to create a, a feeling of an atmosphere of this is where it's taking place, even though it's just a set. But every single thing on that set is there by design. The director, the producer, whoever it is, they're saying, no, I need this here, I need that there. This has to be this color, and there has to be a window in that wall, right? Every single thing is by design. And that's the way the world is. All of that set is built because of the actors who are going to be in it. The world around us is all here, not just arbitrarily. It's all here for us, somehow, in some way. And therefore, everything is considered supporting, secondary. We are the primary, and everything else is secondary. It's there to be the support for us to shape our world as it needs to be for us to attain our growth. Yes? I just wanted to say that I had heard you before say that every blade of grass is very purposeful. So I look at all the trees, and every single pine needle, every single leaf has a purpose, and it just, it's huge. It very is. Big. It is. Yeah, it's every, fascinating. Every, every, I mean, then, even, the, even the music everything. that I'm trying not to sing along to. Like, yes, see, the music is an opportunity for you to overcome your urge to burst out into 80s songs. Especially that song. Sorry. Especially that song, yes. Okay. That's why you play it. You R.E.M. gardening at night. I, like, I, no, no, I heard it. I heard it. I totally heard it. <laughs> yeah, this is difficult. It's not easy. No, I've got real competition. Put the disco back on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got competition. Right, right. No, I don't know any of these music. They don't mind. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, let's continue. All right, hey. <clears throat> ah, hey is for horses. Thank you. That's what Alessa says. Ah, however, Habria Icarus, the main creation. This, in truth, is mankind. Wow. Who would have guessed? V'kol shar ha'nevroim, and all other creations, b'in ha'givoyim imenu, both those that are greater than man, higher than man, I guess would be a better word, b'in ha'shvalim imenu, are those that are lower than man, e'in them el ba'avurai, only exist for the sake of man. V'hashlamas in yonai, in order for men to have their perfection. Through all of the different purposes that they are going to serve. As I will explain more with Hashem's help in the coming chapters. So he's added an element here, which is very subtly. Every angel exists for us. Now that's, a, that's an interesting concept. We don't usually think of something greater as being there for the purpose of something lower. But the reality is that, that that's exactly what it is. You know, you'll, once in a while you'll find that there's a, there's a football team that's got an old quarterback, a real veteran, and they keep him around because the rookie's got a lot to learn. The rookie might be more talented, the rookie might have more potential, but the rookie has a lot to learn. And the person with the most experience is the best suited to 
keeps that rookie. So there are times where even that which is greater is able to be there to serve that which is less great. And that's the way it works with the angels and all the, all the uh, heavenly hosts, as we call them. And, and that's something that we're going to have to discuss. Um, I don't know if he's going to discuss it or not. And if he doesn't, then we probably won't. Um, but it seems that many of the angels are there to serve Hashem, not to serve us. So if he, if he brings it back up, maybe we'll get into it a little bit. But the idea here is that everything that exists remains for our purpose. Not just the blades of grass, but the angels that we can't see and survive. The angels that are closer in proximity to Hashem than we are. The greatest beings. And yet, they're here to serve us. Even in the Alamos, uh, he, I don't know if he talks about it in Derek Hashem, he does talk about another storm. Ramchal talks about, you know, that the world of souls it comes from the world of Bria, where the world of, of Malachim, or angels, comes from the world of the Yitzir. There's a lower, the angels are, the, the world of Neshamas, our Neshama is on a higher level than the world of All right, the we're going to get there. But, yeah, okay. yeah, we're going to get there. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Not too much, but a right, little right, bit. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, Slowly, please. Yes. <laughs> Our brains might explode. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna try to get there in a way that's that's a bit more understandable to the uh, to those who aren't well versed like me. So I'm gonna go for that. I'm not well versed. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just... <laughs> All right, but yeah, the next chapter is gonna gonna start talking about that. So let's let's continue. Okay, so um, um. Um, okay, so just for your um, for for your pleasure, Stephen, he does bring here on the bottom that in Ramchal, the Ramchal writes in Masil Sisharim that a person's soul, independent of this world, is greater than the angels. But we'll talk about it more. But yes, so Masil Sisharim does talk about that. Okay. So now he says, Vihine, ha-haskala v'chol ha-milas Wisdom. Um, intellect, sense, whatever word you want to put to that, and all of the good midos, our good attributes, our way, our good ways of acting, qualities. Those are the vehicles. Those are the method. Those are the medium through which we will and can attain the growth, the perfection. And all the concepts of physicality and the bad midos, those are the source of deficiency. And a person is placed between them, in order to acquire through that choice-making process the perfection. So, what he said over here is also a very, very big concept, and I don't know if he's going to talk about it more or not. But the Chavos Halvava is uh, one of the earliest um, of the Musser works. He writes that the the battle that mankind fights every day is one between the physical and the mind. He says essentially all good choices can be made by following the mind. All bad choices stem from our physicality. And that physicality doesn't have to mean a physical pleasure, but the concept of honor, wanting honor, wanting prestige, wanting to be recognized, social, all these things, those are all products of a human being. Those aren't spiritual things. Those aren't things that stem from the neshama. They don't stem from the intellect of a human being. They stem from our state of being physical. So all of those things... Those are all the things that are our motivation to do what's wrong. Anything that's done wrong has been motivated by something that's connected to physicality. Everything that's done right ultimately should be motivated by spiritual growth and our minds, our intellect. Sometimes we need to use physical to get there. We talked about that in the past. We need to use the wrong reasons to get to doing things for the right reasons. But until the, in, in a perfect world, where we should all eventually end up, is that our in every decision is made by our intellect, by our brain, by our wisdom, and not by any other element 
influencing it at all. So that's what he's talking that's about over here. That's the battleground. That's, that's, the that's battleground. where it is. That's where we're all. That's right. That's the battleground. That's where it is. <clears throat> and the problem is that the more we get into it, yeah. the more we feed the Yetzirah, the harder it is to discern what's really what. And oftentimes we, we make a decision that we think is intellectually sound until someone else looks at it and is like, what? <laughs> where, where did that even come from? Real life. How could you possibly think that that was a, an, intellect, an intellectually sound decision? There was nothing about that was yeah. at all. Uh, right? We, we do that. But the problem is that because we've fed our Yetzirah so many times, it now becomes, it almost takes over to the point that it's hard to discern and know really what's what. So it's, uh, it's, it's a process. It's baffling and powerful, as they say in AA and NA. That's it. <laughs> there it is. Like so, all right, there you got it. Stunning, baffling, and powerful. So what do you, what, how do you, when you've gotten that far, like how do you discern what's right and wrong then? Yeah. How do you discern what's right yeah, or what's wrong? That's like, a very good question. How do you even know that you've gotten to that point where you can't discern right or wrong? That's a very good question. Doc, you sound like you've got an answer. I'm what waiting, was the question? I'm waiting yeah, for the question. Based on your moral compass. What, what was well, what was the question the is, how does one know if their decision is really coming from what we'll call their Yetzir Taiv, their good inclination, or from their Yetzir Ara, their bad inclination? How do you know? How do, yeah. are you, if you're being blinded, how do you know the answer? Hmm? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Well, well, I saw somebody have to talk to somebody, yeah. Okay, so there's a couple of up. The real answer is, and Ramchal himself deals with this, not here, but in other places. The real answer is, you should look in the Torah. All the answers are there. The problem is, we're not all capable.